Welcome to The Real 100. I'm David Hill, your host, and we are a product of HSPN Sports and uh, excited, really excited. Appreciate you being here with us. Kirsten, right? Am I saying yep. your first name? Yep, Correct. You're Kirsten. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Kirsten, I, oh, Kirsten, I practice this like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have to. <laughs> Kirsten Sires. I like the name, though. It's It's got Thank a nice you. ring to it. I really like yes. it. And uh, Kirsten <laughs> joins us. She is the CEO and founder of LRT Sports. And uh, I'm excited because anything, anytime I hear anything about sports, I want to know more about what that organization is and who the person is behind it. And I'm fascinated, and I know our audience will be fascinated to know your story, Kirsten. You, uh, uh, you're a young lady, and you've got this business. And here's what's really fascinating, too, and I'll lead right into this, and you can go on and tell, tell us more about it, but you are... Uh, an athlete yourself, obviously, you played college sports, you played high school sports. I think what's fascinating about you, and I did my homework, <laughs> I did my homework, <laughs> you went to Skidmore College, correct? Yes. Very, very, very strong academic school. Athletics, of course, were a part of that. I thought it was fascinating how you transitioned from tennis, right, yes. to soccer, okay? That's not easy to do. No. <laughs> in college, no less. That might be something you could do in high school, but you did it in a college program. Let's start there and talk about and talk to our audience about your experience as a college or a collegiate athlete, which I also want to talk to you about how you made the transition from high school to college and what made you decide on Skidmore. So talk about that process for, sure. for us. Yeah, absolutely. So I um I kind of played every sport growing up, volleyball, basketball, you name it, like every sport under the sun. I actually even played boys lacrosse. <laughs> so I had always, you know, played every sport. And then when I got to high school, I was at the point where I had to decide what, what I thought. Now looking back, I wish I played more than one sport, but I, in my mind, I was like, I have to pick a sport now. Like This is my time. Okay. If I want to play in college, this is what yeah. I have to do. So I, I decided to pick tennis. Um, and I actually ended up uh, not playing soccer or any other sports in high school. So I played tennis in high school and with the, with tennis, I don't know if you know this or not, but it's not really high school tennis that matters. It's tournaments outside of it. So it's basically an all year, all year sport. You're playing, you're going every weekend to play USCA tournaments, now UTR tournaments. Uh, so we went, I went through this whole process and I got to the recruiting stage and mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was getting recruited for tennis to a lot of different colleges, not just D3, D1 and D3, um, no D2s. And for me, it was like, okay, listen, if you're going to be a professional tennis player, you're probably already on track when you're 14 years old and you're probably not going to college for tennis. Uh, yeah. So I knew in my mind, hey, listen, listen, girlfriend, you're not going to be a college, you're not going to be a professional <laughs> don't athlete. You, don't, you, so, don't you just love it when you talk to yourself? I tell people yeah. all the time, don't, 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 don't get nervous about talking to yourself. You get nervous yeah. when you don't, if you talk to yourself, you don't get the right answer, then you get nervous. <laughs> right, you should, get the, right. you should get the right answer every time when you talk to yourself. Yeah, and my parents were obviously very upfront with me too. Like, listen, you know, you're not a 14 year old prodigy. We're not, we're probably not a professional tennis player. So let's look for academics. And um, okay. I had always okay. gone to smaller private schools. So small school and good academics were important to me. Um, I was between Middlebury and Skidmore at the end of the day, ended up deciding okay. on Skidmore and okay. did my recruiting trip, absolutely loved it, um, you know, and once I finally got on, go ahead. I, I just, because I, I, I'll, I'll hear things, and I, I hate to interrupt you, but when you oh, your recruiting trip, I, I think there's a very important element to that process. I, I, I read up on some of the things that you talk about on your, on your website for your program, your business, but let, let's stop for a second and talk about how critical that recruiting trip is and what did you what what are the expectations that that should happen when you go on a trip as such yeah I party think, you know, should you just party <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. no you know I think yeah. the recruiting trip is is really really important and I feel so bad for everybody going through COVID right now and they probably they can't do yes. recruiting trips yes. um, in the traditional sense so yes. you know I think the biggest takeaways are whether you're doing it virtual or in person is you want to you want to get the team culture and the dynamic of the players uh, I think first and foremost the dynamic of the team you know take the coach aside for a second focus sure. on what the team is like can can you be friends with these people do you have things in common uh, do you feel comfortable around them I think being you know coming into a situation where you could feel like you could be yourself which is what I felt at Skidmore and it could be because my the person who hosted me is still one of my like really great friends 